So the question of whether our beliefs shape our physical health is quite a controversial one. Um, most people accept that if we feel stressed that can make us ill, but what about the reverse? Can our thoughts, our emotions, our beliefs ever heal us? So we do hear a lot of stories um, from people uh, claiming to have perhaps cured their cancer using mind-body techniques or therapists claiming that they could do this for people. And I would be very cautious about those kinds of stories. You know, sometimes you do get spontaneous remissions of cancer and a person may think that that was related to changes in mindset, but we can't show that scientifically. So I certainly think if somebody has cancer, then anything that you can do to um, re reduce stress or improve social connections, for example, to find meaningful activities in life, all of these things are going to help, but I absolutely would not recommend relying on those. I think you have to use those kinds of techniques in association with conventional approaches as well. And one of the very interesting areas of research that's really been turned upside down over the last few years is into placebo effects. So for example, if you take a placebo painkiller, that triggers the release of endorphins in the brain. Um, these are natural pain relieving chemicals that bind to the same uh, receptors on cells as painkillers like morphine. Uh, in Parkinson's disease, uh, patients who respond to placebo have a release of dopamine in the brain, just as when they take their real drugs. But what's coming out of placebo research and some other fields of research as well that's really interesting is that that isn't the whole story. Your, your psychological perception of a threat, how much danger you're in, um, is also feeding into that calculation. So if you feel alone, afraid, stressed, you're particularly worried about a certain condition or symptom, that's going to trigger biological changes in the brain that amplify that symptom, that push the warning signal up. On the other hand, if you feel safe, cared for, you've received what you believe to be effective medical treatment, you think you're about to get better, that's a signal to the brain that the crisis is over. It's triggering physical changes that bring that warning signal back down. Um, so that explains why placebos work, but it's also taking us into a much bigger point about the importance of our mental state when it comes to determining determining how ill or well we feel and the level of symptoms that we are experiencing. I think for me the most surprising thing was to do with learned physiological responses, this idea that we learn through our lives, just an automatic learning process to associate particular environments and psychological cues with certain physiological responses and this is fairly well known for things like digestion or salivation, blood pressure, but I was really blown away by the fact that this applies to the immune system as well. You can train your immune system to respond to psychological cues like taste and smell. There's a group in Germany using a, a green drink made of strawberry milk, lavender oil and green food colouring and they've shown that if you drink this drink alongside a drug that suppresses the immune system, then subsequently that drink on its own will suppress your immune system in just the same way. And that really blew my mind as a completely revolutionary approach to medicine that uses both the physical approach, the drugs and our psychological capacity together in an intelligent way.